Hello, this is astrologynewsreport.com with your hosts, David Anton Savage and Ron Berger. Now we go to our third segment of this week's report, People in the News, where we will analyze the Vedic astrology birth chart of a newsworthy person. This week we have decided to analyze the birth chart of Chris Christie, the newly re-elected governor of New Jersey, who is now, more than ever, the front-runner for the Republican presidential nomination of 2016. Governor Christie was born in Newark, New Jersey on September 6th, 1962. There is no published birth time, so we had to rectify his chart. Based on the facts of his life, we have chosen a 10.30 p.m. birth time. So let's take a look at this chart and see how it fits with the facts of his life story. Well, first off, we have Taurus as the rising sign. Certainly the qualities of the sign of the bull seem to fit for Mr. Christie. This guy has a solid reputation for not backing down from anything or anybody. And when he gets mad, he will show you his horns. He even sports a thick neck, one of the physical attributes of Taurus rising. Ah, uh, yes, and the position of the ruler of the Ascendant is central to finding out one's true dharma in life. Here we see Mr. Christie's Ascendant Lord, Venus, is strongly placed in the other sign that it rules Libra in his sixth house. The sixth house is the house of difficulty, enemies, and work. Having the ruler of the sixth in the sixth is powerful for overcoming difficulties and defeating one's enemies. Venus is the planet of lawyers, and Libra is also associated with lawyers. The sixth house is the house of service. Governor Christie went to law school, and after a brief stint in a law firm, went into the public service sector when he became a U.S. attorney in 2002. Another interesting point here is that Venus is the planet of compromise. As a Republican governor dealing with a legislature controlled by the Democrats, Christie has to be able to compromise with his enemies. A strong Venus in his sixth house enables him to do this. And of course, he famously was so nice with Obama, which earned him the enmity of his fellow Republicans. How about that Scorpio moon in the seventh house? Scorpio mm. is a very passionate sign. It is a sign that loves acquiring power. Scorpio is the sign of psychology. Having the moon in the seventh house means that your emotions can be overwhelming. Certainly, Governor Christie clearly demonstrates a powerful emotional nature. And people see you from the seventh house, and the moon represents the public. So having his moon in the seventh puts him in front of the public. By the way, since the moon is a general signifier of mother... This prominent position for the moon indicates his mother would loom large in his life. In fact, Governor Christie has said his mom was definitely the driver in the family and his father was a passenger. Some other clues to his nature come from the rising nakshatra and the moon's nakshatra. We have chosen the 10.30 p.m. birth time because it gives him kritika on the ascendant and the moon in jeshta. Kritika is associated with the mythological story of Kartikeya, who became the leader of the army that defeated the demons. As a U.S. attorney, Christie made a name for himself going after organized crime, government corruption, and fraud. Kritika is also known for cutting speech. The moon's lunar sign, Jeshta, is in the nakshatra associated with Indra. Indra, who is the uh, ruler of heaven, is also connected with defeating demons. In Vedic mythology, Indra is known as an irascible character who does whatever it takes to get the job done. The Sanskrit word jashta is translated as being the most senior, i.e. destined to attain a position of authority and power. Moving on to other details, there are a whole bunch of really strong positions in this favorable birth chart. The very first thing that jumps out at me is the fact that no less than four planets are posited in their own signs. The Sun, Lord of the Fourth, is in the Fourth in Leo. This gives a great deal of self-assurance. Mercury, Lord of the Fifth, is in the Fifth in Virgo, indicating a powerful intelligence and capability for handling details. 
Venus, Lord of the Sixth, is in the Sixth in Libra, excellent for overcoming difficulties. Saturn, Lord of the Ninth, House of Destiny, is in its own sign, Capricorn, giving a powerful sense of destiny. The other thing to take note of is that the Sun, the Moon, and Jupiter are all in the Kendra houses, which contributes greatly to the dynamic quality of the chart, indicating success in life. Now Rahu, the planet of ambition, is in his third house of self-efforts, skills, and abilities. This gives him a whole lot of drive to get things done, and it helps to confirm that this is the correct chart in that the third house is the house of younger siblings. Rahu's position here indicates a successful co-born, but with a shadow quality of Rahu, can make for a shady character. His younger brother is a very successful Wall Street broker who came under investigation for financial wrongdoing. Let's hope that his younger brother does not cause a scandal for him down the road. Hmm. Chris Christie first attained his high office by defeating the then-incumbent governor, John Corzine, in 2009. Christie was in his Sun Major period and Venus sub-period. The Sun symbolizes authority and is strong in his chart in its own sign. Venus rules his first house of self. Placed in the other sign, it rules in the sixth house of enemies, and it gave him then victory over his opponent. This year... Christie is in his Moon Major period and Jupiter sub-period, both of which are powerfully placed in the Kendra houses, and so he was easily re-elected as New Jersey's governor. This shows how planets in Kendra houses work. His Moon, the planet of the public, is there in his seventh house of how one is seen by others. His natal Jupiter is placed at the zenith of his chart in the 10th house of career and actions out in public. On a side note, the public is seeing a less large Governor Christie these days. He had elective lap band surgery in order to lose some weight at the onset of the Jupiter sub-period in February of 2013. Jupiter rules his 8th house, which is the house of surgical operations. Yes, this sure looks like a chart that works for Governor Christie. There's a lot of media buzz on the idea that he could well be the candidate that the GOP picks to run for Prez in the next election. And with that in mind, let's take a first look at his prospects for 2016. In June of 2014, he enters Saturn sub-period of his Moon Major period, as the ruler of both the ninth house of good fortune and the tenth house of public action and renown, Saturn is the Yogacarka planet for Taurus rising. In other words, a planet that delivers positive results. In Mr. Christie's chart, Saturn is very well placed in his ninth house of destiny and good luck. My guess is that he will answer the call. I also think that he will do so at a time of personal cost. He will be at the height of Sadi Sati. Transiting Saturn will be exactly over his Scorpio moon in January of 2016. That's a really intense time for him, especially since his moon is already activated due to his moon major period. Well, since you have mentioned it, let's define the astrological principle of Sadi Sati. It is a seven years long period during which Saturn transits the house before the natal moon's position, the moon's house itself, and the house after the moon's natal position. In general, it's a serious decision-making time. So yes, uh, Candidate Christie would have some heavy pressure on him during those years. His run for the presidency will occur during his Mercury sub-period. Mercury is very well placed. It is exalted in his fifth house of intelligence and past life credit. But Mercury subperiod also activates his second house of speech, where he has aggressive Mars in Gemini, and Mars rules the twelfth house of loss. He's already known for being quite prone to angry, blunt speech, which, although it can play well in an intense East Coast state like New Jersey, it's not going to appeal all the way across the country. 
Thus, during the campaign, he is likely to get a bit too hot under the collar, but certainly he will also bring plenty of quick wit and repartee along with very high intelligence to the political table. As such, the public will no doubt be entertained. As far as whether or not he wins, uh, well, to answer that question, we need to compare his birth chart with that of his opponent. And although we may speculate on who the Democrats nominate for 2016, I think um, we'll wait a bit until...